In this video, I'm gonna be talking about and testing the Vivor 3500 watt, 12 volt to 120 volt pure sine wave inverter. In the first part of this video, I'm gonna be covering the highlights of the inverter and what comes with it. And then in the second half of the video, we'll get to testing. If you wanna jump right to that, I'll have some timestamps down below so you can click right to what you're trying to find out about the inverter. And after watching the entire video, you should have a better understanding if this inverter is right for you. And be sure to watch the entire video because I'm gonna cover a lot. First, let's talk about what an inverter is. There are two main types of inverters, and that is modified sine wave and a pure sine wave inverter. Uh, more than likely, you're gonna be looking at purchasing a pure sine wave inverter. It's just a cleaner inverter than what a modified sine wave is. That's a whole different video. I can make a complete video just on the differences between the two. But what we have with us today is a pure sine wave and more than likely, that's what you're gonna be looking for as well. These are your DC input that come from your battery. And these are the AC outlets that go to your appliances. And more than likely on most of these inverters of this size, these are gonna be a maximum of 15 amps. And if you wanna go any larger, you have to use the terminal block, which can go up to 25 amps. And inverters come in different voltage, 12 volt, 24 volt, 36 volt, and 48 volt. And it's very important to point out that a 12 volt inverter can only work with a 12 volt system. So your batteries coming in need to be 12 volts. A 24 volt inverter has to have a 24 volt battery bank coming in. And it's same thing for 36 and 48 volt inverters. And one other thing to consider on these inverters are the continuous watts and the peak watts. This one is 3,500 continuous watts with a 7,000 peak watts. And just in case you're unsure of what continuous power and peak power means, 3,500 watts under a continuous load and 7,000 watts under a surge. So if you're pulling big uh, like compressors or something of that sort, you're gonna need that peak power. If you're just powering lights and regular appliances, then you're gonna pay more attention to the 3,500 watt continuous power. Now let's talk about what you get when you purchase the inverter. You get the inverter, you get two cables, 18 inches long. These are not pure copper. These are copper clad aluminum. Also, you get your user manual and eight 50 amp fuses a monitor with the monitor cable. Another thing to consider on any inverter that you buy is the idle consumption, whether that's called zero load draw, standby, no load, or whatever you wanna call it, it's all idle consumption, and it means the same thing. And while I was reading through the manual, I couldn't find the 3500 watt series on idle consumption. I found a model below it and a model above it. So I'm gonna use those two numbers and say the idle consumption should be somewhere between 1.2 amps and 1.8 amps at 12 volts. And if my math serves me correctly, on the low side, that would be 14 watts. And on the high side, that would be 28 watts. But don't worry, I'm actually gonna put a clamp meter on this and find out exactly what the idle consumption is on this model. And the housing is constructed from full aluminum alloy, which helps keep the inverter cooler and it prevents it from corrosion. It's important that you never cover the unit and you don't ever wanna put anything in front of the exhaust. So you have a fan here that's keeping this cool. It's drawing from this side and it's blowing the hot air out of this side. I like to mount it like this here with no electrical components on this side because all of the hot air is coming out of this fan right here. And another tip that I'll give you is do not install it vertically with the fan downward because what happens to hot air it rises so it's going to be coming up around those vents and you're defeating the purpose of trying to keep this as cool as possible if you must mount this vertically be sure that the fan is pointing upward but note that items can drop down inside of the fan the actual weight is 13.2 pounds and when you go to connect your inverter to your battery be sure to use a resistor. And all I've done here is use a gator clamp that connected that side of the resistor. And then I used another one for this side of the resistor. Now I know this is wired correctly, so I don't mind holding this in my hand, or you can actually take this off and tab it just like that right there. But it's just safer to use a gator clamp and you're a little bit protected right here. 
and you want to hold that on there for just a couple seconds to charge the capacitors in your inverter. And it's also important if that inverter has been setting for a while disconnected that those uh, capacitors have lost charge. You want to do this anytime that you hook it up. Just be safe. I do it every time that I go hook up an inverter. Now when I put my cable on that terminal, there's nothing to worry about. Now that we have our battery hooked to our inverter and our remote display plugged in, we can use this to start up the inverter. However, it's important to note, this will not work if you have the power turned on and you try to turn this on and off. This doesn't control it no longer. You have to have the power switch turned off to control it. Let's take a quick look at our display and what it's telling us, we have an input of 13.5 volts for our input, 60 hertz, 120 volts output, a full battery, zero watts being consumed, and this is the sine wave, and that's the symbol for pure sine wave. And for the idle consumption, I wanted to do a manual test with the clamp meter. So let's put this on here and get a quick reading. 0 0.36, 0.37. Let's try the other wire just to make sure. So we got at 0 0.39, 0 0.40. That's very surprising because the manual states that this would consume between 1.2 and 1.8 amps at 12 volts. That's putting you anywhere between 14 and 28 watts. And I'm only getting 3.8 or I'm sorry, 0.38 at 12 volts. That's putting us at around four and a half watts for our idle consumption. That's very impressive if that's the case. I'm gonna browse their website and see if I can confirm that. But at idle, with nothing plugged in, we're only using about four and a half watts. And probably the part you've been waiting for the entire video is to actually see this thing power some appliances. And the first test that I'm gonna do are to test those GFCI outlets on the front because on Vivor's website, they clearly state that those outlets are GFCI protected. And to do that, I'm gonna use a GFCI tester. We currently have an open ground because this system isn't grounded. And I actually do not see a grounding lug anywhere on the unit. And that's my first concern that that GFCI is not gonna operate. To use this, all you need to do is press this little button right here and it should trip everything. That's not working. And let me show you exactly how this works on a protected circuit with GFCI. So if we come over here to a properly wired GFCI, this circuit protects everything down this line. So if we test this, we're gonna get a red light. You hear the click, all right? So we have an active circuit. I plug this in and we have our light, the one in the middle and the one on the right side. That is telling us that is wired correctly. Now, if I click that button, it will trip the breaker. So my conclusion is those are not GFCI protected and Vivor should take that off their website that they are GFCI protected. It's not a deal breaker for me. Just don't advertise that it's a GFCI protected device when it's clearly not. I'm gonna start off with an LCD TV. It doesn't use too much electricity, but I think that's something that a lot of people use. Right now we're at 64. All right, so we have a TV powered up. Could probably watch TV for days on days with this battery. This is a 200 amp hour battery. Another item that a lot of people like to use is a coffee maker. I got a Q-Reg machine here that I'm gonna get plugged in. Definitely something that I have to have. So we'll plug that in, turn the power on. Now we're up to 1,763 watts. And that's because we have the heater heating up the water. And we're still consistently at 1,763. And of course, anytime there's a coffee maker around, there's an opportunity for a cup of coffee. Why not get one? I use this in a lot of my videos like this because this is a good range of around 400 watts. 350 to 400 watts when it's turned on maximum speed. And something else that I have noticed 
is that the display here, the input is coming in at 13.1 volts, but on the display on the unit itself is showing 13.4 volts. Final test on this, I'm gonna be hooking up this heat gun and running it on the highest setting. This is gonna run around 1600 watts. If we can get the burner to kick back on, on our coffee maker, we'll be adding in another 1600 watts, putting us around 3200 watts with the fan around 35400. We're going to go over the 3,500 watts, especially with the TV on, which is only around 65 watts. But my concern with this test is the battery itself. It has a BMS built into it. And if you try to use too much power, it'll automatically kick it off. But let's see if we can get it to go over 3,500 watts. Now let's talk about what I think are the pros of purchasing this inverter. The very first thing, of course, is the price at $228. I think that's a really good buy for a pure sine wave inverter at 3,500 watts with a 7,000 watt surge. And I think this inverter can work for a lot of people. Now, will it power your house? No, it's not gonna power your entire house. This is not the inverter for that. We'll have videos on that a little bit later. But does this inverter work? Yes. And one thing that I did notice is this thing runs extremely quiet. I mean, I can hardly hear it run. So that, that's a big plus when you're talking about an inverter powering appliances. In the idle consumption, running at only 4.5 watts, that's a huge plus. Even if it was running 15 watts, I would still find that to be really good on an inverter of that size. And the weight of the unit, it's not a real heavy inverter. If you wanna move this thing around, it's easy to do that. Now let me talk about the cons or things that I think that need to be improved. I think the cables that they send with these inverters, they need to be pure copper. Uh, I would rather see pure copper than copper clad aluminum. And they should have added a ground terminal to this inverter. That is something that absolutely should be added to an inverter of this size. And these AC outlets, Vivor should not advertise this unit as GFCI protected AC outlets because in my test, these were not GFCI protected. If you found this video helpful in any way or you wanna see more videos like this in the future, smash that thumbs up button and leave me a comment below. Let me know what you wanna see and I'll do my very best to test that product out. I hope to catch you in my next project.